Today we're going to be talking about the nomenclature rules for transition metal ionics. Now, this is going to be different than the representative binaries as transition metals are not going to be in the first two columns of my periodic table. Instead, my transition metals are going to be anything that is a metal that is not in the first two columns. So basically, if it is to the left of the, of the stair step line, and it's not in the first two columns, it is going to be a transition metal. Now with my transition metal ionics, it's important to know that my transition metals can change how many electrons they lose. So their charge, otherwise known as their oxidative state, has to be calculated every single time. Now the reason that they can change their uh, number of electrons that they're going to lose is because of that D block of electrons. Uh, which are close enough to the valence shell that they can also be taken. But uh, overarching, my transition metals are going to be able to change their oxidative state. So that means I have to figure out what their charge is every time. And I have to calculate that instead of just being able to look at the periodic table and figure it out. <clears throat> so for oxidative state calculations, I'm always going to start with my anion first. Oddly enough, my anion, my bad guy, the one who has a negative charge, is going to be more trustworthy than my cation, my positive charge. This is because my cation is changing how many valence electrons it's giving away, but my anion is always going to steal the same amount. It's kind of like the difference between uh, like your friend who will lo lend you whatever money that they have versus your friend that's always 15 minutes late. Like you don't know how much your friend is gonna lend you today for lunch, but you do know that you have to tell your friend Sarah that the movie starts 15 minutes before it actually does so that she makes it in on time for the movie. So I always have to start with my anion. And just as a reminder again, since I need a net charge of zero, my total charge for my cation has to be equal and opposite that of my anion. And that's how I'm actually going to be able to figure out what my cation's charge is going to be. So I have a handy dandy little formula here for how to figure out what the charges are for the cation for anything that is going to be a transition metal. So here I have my uh, actual compound here. I have Fe2O3. My anion is going to be oxygen. It's coming second, and I will deal with that first. So I have a sort of formula here. I have subscript charge and then my total charge. And I'm going to figure out my anion's information first, and that will help me with my cation. So my anion's subscript is three. And my anion is oxygen. So I can go to the periodic table. I can see that oxygen is in column six, which means it has six valence electrons, which means I'm going to go ahead and steal two valence electrons. So its charge is going to be negative two. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply three and negative two, and that's going to give me negative six. Now, since my total charge for my cation has to be equal and opposite of my anion, I can go ahead and say, what is the opposite of negative six? Oh, well, positive six. Then I can figure out for my cation, my subscript for my cation is two. And that means that my only missing piece of information here is going to be my individual ions or irons charge. And I can figure that out by saying, okay, well, what is two times something? And it's going to give me positive six. Oh, I know. Positive three. Okay, so now that I have that information, I can go ahead and use it. Now, my charge here, the one that is in parentheses, that is going to be my oxidative state for my cation. And since I am not actually sure uh, what version of iron I'm going to have in any particular instance, I have to tell you which version of iron you're dealing with. And I'm going to do that by stating the charge of my cation using Roman numerals in the actual name of the compound. So that means 
the Fe203 is going to become iron 3 oxide. That 3 is the same 3 here. I went from Arabic numerals to Roman numerals, and it's just iron with a charge of 3 bonded with oxide. Iron 3 oxide. I do have some special transition metals who don't like to be treated as if they do not uh, deserve our trust. And those special transition metals can be summarized as Kadzenagel. That is a shorthand for them. That is going to be cadmium, zinc, silver, and aluminum. Cadmium always has a charge of plus two. Zinc always has a charge of plus two. Silver always has a charge of plus two. And aluminum always has a charge of plus three. Since they always have these charges, they get to be treated as if they were a representative metal, which means I am not going to give you any Roman numerals at all. Now, how you can actually remember what, Cad, uh, what Cadzenagel's charge is going to be, you can actually find them on the periodic table, and they will form kind of a stair step. My first stair is going to have a charge of plus one, second stair a charge of plus two, and third stair a charge of plus three.